Hello, and welcome to our third COVID-19 market update with Thomas Caldwell. Tom, today is April the 29th, 2020. It's yeah. two weeks since the last update that we did, and it's six weeks, actually, since we started self-isolating and social distancing. Now, governments are talking about opening up cities, provinces, and the country. So let's start thinking about post-COVID-19. Um, what's the next phase, and what do you see happening in the markets and in the economy? Well, the, the shape of the recovery in the, in the economy and in markets will really depend on the length of time it takes to reopen our economies around the world, and particularly in the United States. So that is a very, very important factor. The longer that goes on, the more damage will be done and the longer it will take to get a full-scale recovery. Uh, what the new normal is going to look like will be quite interesting. Uh, everybody has their theory on it, but let's take your word isolation. Uh, I think world trade is going to be set back significantly. An American politician once used the phrase, you should never let a good crisis go to waste. And I think that's what's going to happen out of America. You're going to see America isolate. They're going to go to self-sufficiency. It means if you have to pay $4 more for that t-shirt at Walmart, so be it, as long as it's made in America. So there's going to be this pulling in of supply chains. And, and I think the president will use this to really take a swing at China. China is going to be held responsible for this, and I think that will be part of the November election scene, shutting the U.S. economy down, particularly from Chinese goods, Chinese manufacturers. So that's going to be part of it. So in part, when I look at investing, it means I want to be inside the most powerful economy on the face of the earth. I want to focus a little bit more on United States investments. Uh, similarly, when I look at coming out of this, there's going to be a lot of companies that need money. They're going to have to raise financing. They're going to have to, they're going to have to fund this debt that they've been taking on. So I think you're going to see financial services also as an area that recovers, even, even the banks, the U.S. big banks, uh, and also the Canadian banks. And, and I do believe the dividends on the Canadian banks are relatively secure. So these yields you're getting at these levels probably make some sense. I tend to be a bit of a value investor, and, and as such, I look for things that have been really slammed down and try to look at the time frame it takes for them to recover from that point. And I'm looking at the oil and gas business, for example. Everybody knows about supplies and the, you know, no storage space, and you can't fill your swimming pool with oil. There's all this stuff going on right now. But in actual fact, sooner or later, the demand for fuel will increase on a world scale basis. And uh, the Middle East, this started with this price war between Russia and Saudi. Everybody's finally getting their act together. So maybe six months, nine months, a year from now, you'll see a little bit better pricing in that area. So that means the companies that can survive through this period of time may be opportunities in the energy area. Uh, I did do a tiny bit of buying in that area even today. So financial services, U.S. market, possibly if, you're, if you want to be a bit of a gambler, even some of the energy area. A lot of the uh, high-tech stuff has already moved up quite significantly, the Googles, the Amazons, that type of thing. So with all of the self-isolating self people have been impulse shopping and impulse trading. Now, what can you say to individuals who've been trading their own investments and haven't had the expertise of an investment advisor? Well, I think it's a false economy. Investment success is not about the commission you pay or anything else. I, I've never really cared about that myself. And it's worked out quite well for me because I function in a team environment. Because quite frankly, there are times in markets when I'm pretty good. And there are times in markets that I shouldn't be downtown by myself. And that's where I bounce ideas, refine my ideas. But it's not only getting ideas and refining your thinking, it's also quelling your emotions. And remember, this is a highly emotional period. The early phases of this, we didn't even know whether we were going to survive. Now we're seeing a few rays of light. So the dynamic is changing of the influences on markets, from panic to possibly opportunity. Uh, I think it's very good to quell your emotions. The best way to do that is to get some decent investment advice from a pro. Uh, yes, you can talk to your pals, but they're probably subject to the same influence you are. That is what's going on in television. And that's not a good source. So refining ideas, quelling your emotions is the most important thing in terms of investment success. Thank you so much for your time, Tom. Thank you. Stay safe and stay healthy.